Hello. Uh, recently, there's been some interesting discussion of of death in in a horror game, and uh, I think it was kicked off by uh, Thomas uh, Grip of, of Frictional talking about a problem he saw with uh, Alien Isolation, which is basically you build up this tension to um, the encounter, and then. <clears throat> you uh, die and then you, you're hit with the loading screen or whatever and that tension sort of goes away. And so, um, you know, uh, I don't think you want to release tension um, as, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a horror game. So, um, you know, uh, Thomas Group suggested something like an Outlast, where, like, the enemies throw you, and then you're, you're not dead, you're still in the game, you still have to run. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, and, and you, there's still the tension, because you still have to run. Uh, and one of the things, um, <clears throat> he mentioned is they're trying to do this sort of fate worse than death, um, in Soma, and I don't know, maybe I'm not good at, at reading between the lines, but it, it seemed, um, a, a little cryptic. I mean, uh, if I would have to guess, I would say some sort of, uh, insanity or some sort of, uh, you know, revealing something negative about your, your character, like, um, you know, uh, imagine... And, and that's probably not what they're, they're doing in Soma, but I, I'm just sort of spitballing here. But imagine if, if your character is some sort of immortal, but <clears throat> with every sort of injury he takes, it, he becomes more and more monstrous. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously you'd want to finish the game uh, as less monstrous. And... I, I remember playing Journey, and I was, like, really digging my scarf. I'm like, yeah, I have this awesome scarf. And then they took away my scarf length, and I was so mad. I'm like, no, it's not fair. I worked so hard to get that scarf. So, I don't know, maybe maybe scarf length is really a, a fate worse than death. Um, but, <laughs> well... Uh, you may laugh, and I'm, I'm laughing, but I mean, like, I was really mad about the scarf, especially because I thought that, you know, Journey was going to be a very forgiving game about exploration, and then it turns out they're not very forgiving when it comes to your precious scarf and removing, uh, segments. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's interesting, thing, things that, like that, where, where there's some sort of loss... Uh, you know, you can't uh, get back. And, and, I mean, there's games that do interesting things with death, like um, in Zombie U, which I've never played. I don't think many people have played it. But basically, if a zombie kills you, you become a zombie. And so you have to go run as a new character to the location of your supplies and pick them back up and, and not get killed by the zombie version of you or something like that. Uh, so, I mean, it's sort of an interesting thing where the, the you know, you, you maintain some sort of tension because now you don't have your equipment and you have to um, get it back and you're this new character. Um, but, I mean, to some extent that's sort of uh, a challenging uh, death mechanic and, and, and certainly uh, Dark Souls... Uh, had sort of a, I, I don't really quite understand how it works, but it seems like there's a pretty big penalty for dying, and you die a lot. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I think the, the sort of uh, holy grail would be something that, that keeps attention up, but isn't too punishing, and, and certainly like in Dread Out, they punish you by um, making you walk forever in this limbo world and taunt you with uh, completely out of context, um, messages. So, um, <clears throat> uh, another, uh, per person on the forum grabbed the, the hookah mentioned, uh, Hell Knight, or, uh, I think Dark Messiah or something, I don't know, it had different names, I think, in the EU and Japan or whatever. But uh, I guess the, the monster can kill your sort of AI companion, and then maybe you get a new AI companion, or maybe you're just stuck without one. And, like, something like that is kind of like a fate worse than video game death, because, you know, you feel this emotional attachment and, and then loss. But 
I mean, uh, unless you have some sort of <coughs> procedural character creator and limited dialogue interaction and stuff, you know, having a never-ending chain of characters that, that, that the enemies can kill off is, is going to be challenging. Um, <coughs> and, and certainly, you know, the idea of death, um, is, is something that, that concerned me and something that I wanted to try and deal with and never any nightmares in. And uh, I'm not sure I, you know, we have the best solution. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there is some tension release when you um, uh, <clears throat> die. But, but my idea is that, you know, you don't really die. You're still uh, in the game you just wake up and there's no loading screens and nothing that takes you out of the immersion and and you just keep playing and so i'm hoping because it's so immediate and it's and you're still in the the tense and as atmospheric world which i think a lot of our tension comes from you know the the actual world and less so from the actual enemy encounters which isn't true of every horror game but i mean some people have, have said uh, in in playthroughs like that they find the um, sections with enemies, you know, much more, uh, much less tense because, you know, there's the enemy, they know it's there. But throughout the game, uh, you know, there's this idea that there's going to be something horrible that you just don't know about. And so, I mean, I think to some extent that's a success, right? Because uh i think you know true horror is is about the spaces in between if, if it were just you know constant enemy encounters then it, it wouldn't really be a horror game it'd be be more of an action game and i think you know uh the fact that the enemy encounters are almost less tense because hey there's the enemy you know he's there i mean obviously i, th I think the enemy encounters have have tension to them um, but I, I, and, and then hopefully they're not like, oh, whatever, let's, let's just skip this enemy, he's lame. I mean, I hope it's not, you know, that level of tension, but I think the idea that, uh, the tension is, is building up in the mind and, and then the actual game tension, I mean, I, I still find some of the enemy encounters, you know, pretty tense, uh, personally, but maybe I'm just, uh, <sighs> weak or something I don't have the, the nerves of steel that, that others um, have but I mean I think I think the idea of death and, and how you can approve a mechanic that's sort of uh, taken for granted uh, like death is an important question to ask and and certainly I'll be very interested to um, see what Soma does maybe they have some sort of insanity system or you lose part of your mind or your memories or or things like that I think you know, uh, loss, um, or, or maybe they, they, you know, yeah, basically you're, you're, maybe you're, you're punished in, in some way, you're losing something you can't get back, I think, uh, really keeps the, the tension up, because, I, I mean, compare it to, uh, you know, playing an arcade game on, on free play, there's no tension in death, uh, you know, you're just like, hey, uh, you know, sometimes I die so I can get my magical bar, you know, my energy bar is reset, because it's like, whatever, it doesn't cost me anything. But if you're playing that arcade game, you know, with quarters, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta, you know, dodge and do this move, and oh, it's gonna cost me a fortune, you know, and, and so, um, I mean, I think, you know, trying to, to give death or, or your enemy encounters or, or something, whatever you're doing, you know, get, give it some tension, um, I think is important. And I mean, I, I think, you know, it would be interesting to do an, a, a horror game with, without death or, I mean, even without enemies, but I think without the threat, uh, it, it would be difficult to, to pull off, like, the, um, you know, threat of the enemies there, um, you know, haunting you and, and coming after you. If you realize they can't hurt you or there's no punishment or they, they, they don't do anything, then, then they, they sort of lose their teeth, uh, so to speak. Um, Anyway, I don't think I came to any brilliant conclusions, but I think, uh, you know, the, the, I, I like the idea of sort of questioning every game mechanic, like, what does this serve, you know, um, 
what can you do to change things and and uh you know does this really benefit the type of game you're making because i think all too often people sort of fall into the trap of oh this is what a game is and this is what it should be and i should have lives and there should be you know a ui and i should be able to pick up a weapon and i should be able to do this and that but i think by you know sort of illuminating some of those assumptions and and um you know, figuring out what serves your best game, you can create something, uh, you know, a, a bit more elegant. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, with Never Ending Nightmares, we're trying to, uh, you know, just create the, um, what what's important to the game and, you know, leave all sorts of convoluted inventory systems and pickups and all, all that stuff out. Um, and, and I think, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, I, I think it, it serves us well, personally, but uh, I mean, we'll see what people think when we finish the game. Anyway, thanks for watching.